Hey guys, I'm Mario and in this short video I'm going to show you guys how to register a trademark online in the UK. If you're someone who's sitting on the fence and considering whether to pay a solicit or a third party service, then don't, honestly don't. Having been through the process of starting an online business which has involved registering numerous trademarks, I can confidently say this is going to be one of the most cost efficient tasks you'll do in the process. I've seen lawyers and various online services charging an absolute arm and a leg for registering a trademark in the UK with prices easily going up to six, seven hundred quid. The actual cost of registering a trademark in the UK is £170 and the process takes less than 30 minutes, so you can do the maths. So there are two important decisions we need to make when submitting an application and they are trademark class and trademark type. I'll be explaining what they are and how to choose them throughout the video. In a minute, I'll be showing my screen with you and going through the trademark classes. I'll then show you how to carry out effective research into live trademarks in order to help you choose your trademark type and minimize the chances of someone who already holds a similar trademark type, um, who holds a similar trademark to oppose your application. In doing so, we'll then be able to determine which trademark type is suitable for us. And once we've established those two, the trademark class and trademark type, I'll then walk you through the, the application process and then finally discuss the timescales involved the opposition period and what you can do if your application is opposed. Guys, if you do enjoy the video, then please like and subscribe to the channel so I can keep these videos coming. And most importantly, if you have any questions, then drop them in the comment section below. Enjoy the video. So assuming we've already chosen the name of our trademark, in my case, Featherstone, the next thing we need to do is decide on the trademark class. Let's have a brief look at some of the trademark classes that are available to us. You can either click on the link in the description of the video, which I'll be sharing, or you can simply Google tr trademark classes UK. And you can click on this link here, general indication of goods and services, and this should bring up all of the 45 classes. So you've got classes one to 34, which should cover all goods. And then you've got classes 35 to 45, which cover all services. Now, each of these classes contains a list of pre-approved terms. So there'll be hundreds, sometimes thousands of pre-approved terms under each class, which we'll see in a minute once we start filling the application. It doesn't cost more to add more pre-approved terms. You only pay 50 pounds per class, per additional class. So when I'm doing it, I usually just cover every pre-approved term, you know, as opposed to sitting there picking, choosing and picking, because you're not paying any extra. So all of these 45 classes should cover most goods and services. However, if you struggle to find your class, then I've got a great recommendation. It's an amazing tool, a uh, trademark class search tool on the EU IPO website. You can either access it by following the link on the video's description, or you can just Google search EU IPO class assistance, like I'll do now, EU IPO, EU IPO. And you can follow this top link here. Once you're on the page, all you need to do is type in your product and it will tell you which class your product fits into. Of course, if you have more than one product in more than one category, then add all of the necessary categories you want to be registered under. So I'm going to type in leather handbags as, as an example. And if I scroll down slightly, I can see that handbags are listed under class 18. You can also have a look on the left side of the screen over here for a brief description of the trademark class just to solidify your decision. So we can hit see here it's classified under goods, class 18, and it fits under the luggage, bags, wallets, and other carriers category. We can try another product. Right, so now I've tried belts, and we can see there's a few different types of belts which fit mostly into class 10, but also class 7 pops up quite a few times. We can see orthopedic belts, maternity belts, and so on fit into class 10. And we've also got some fabric belts, tuxedo belts, and suspender belts 
in class 25. Um, if you need more help deciding on which of these classes your product fits under, you can use this classification guide on the left hand side and that will just break down the classes into a more detailed description. So if we were, for instance, deciding between class 10 and 7, we can see class 7 fits into agriculture, earth moving, construction, oil and gas, extraction, mining equipment. Um, so that makes it clear what these are. That's obviously a lift and, and an ele elevator belt. And we can see in class 10, we've got physical therapy equipment and a fabric belt which will probably be your general clothing items. There you go, clothing. Guys, this is a great tool to begin with, but it doesn't cover every single product. So if you're still struggling to find your trademark class, then you should email the trademark classifications team at tmclassification at ipo.gov.uk and I'm sure they'll be more than happy to help. It's important to note that each additional trademark class costs 50 quid on top of the application fee. So just to clarify that, the application fee of 170 or 200 pounds already includes one trademark class. The extra 50 pounds fee will be applied to each additional class you add on top of the application. So you can add as many classes as you'd like to your application if you believe they will be required for your brand. However, adding more classes may increase the chance of being opposed. If your brand expands into different categories or you need to add on a class onto your trademark for any other reason after you've submitted your application, then you will need to go through the application process again and pay the application fee 170 quid plus 50 pounds for additional classes. So it's really important to capture all of the classes you think will apply to your brand in your first application um, just to avoid paying that application fee again. Okay, so once we have our class, we can start our research. Now, remember the purpose of the research is to identify whether there are similar trademarks in the same class as ours. If there are, then we can increase our chances of success by creating a unique logo containing the word we want to trademark. If there aren't, then we can assume that our chances of success of trademarking the word alone will be high enough. And I'll discuss later on why trademarking a, a standalone word is more beneficial than trademarking a logo, if possible. So let's begin by going to the trademark register. We can do this by searching search trademark on Google. And you can click this top link here. And then we can follow keyword phrase or image so we're going to be searching by keyword so once you're onto this page search for trademarks which is similar to yours simply by typing in your trademark here so the example i'm using today is featherstone and we can save ourselves a fair bit of time here since trademarks are only valid for 10 years we can filter out anything over 10 years old or roughly over 10 years old. So if I just click search here, this will bring up every trademark that's been registered in the UK and the EU, which is similar to Featherstone. And these are most likely going to be the trademarks which the IPO will notify once your trademark has been posted in the open register during the opposition period. What I wanna do here is look for trademarks which are the same as the featherstone also in the same classes so we're not really bothered about any trademarks which are the same and are listed in different classes so the class that i was going to pick was class 18 we're going to be selling as an example leather bags under the trademark featherstone so i can ignore that I can ignore that we can see these are 20 21 and 24 25 what i'm going to do here is just Use a search function, Featherstone. I'm looking for class 18 down here now. There we go, okay. So there's one trademark there, which is the exact same name that I wanna be registering today, also in the same class. So I'm gonna keep going through this search function until I basically get to the end of these pages. Stone feather, that's not similar enough. Leather stone, that's quite different. Feather, leather, two different words. I'm gonna keep going through. The search function so there's no feather stones on this page 
and there's no feather stones on this page and there's no feather stones on this page since my trademark is one word feather stone now we can assume that anything with two words or more is distinguishable enough to void anybody's application who will potentially oppose it and hence can ignore them in our research let's just double check leather and imitations of leather that was publicated on the 25th of May 2018. It's, it's well in its 10 year validation period. So that is something to worry about in theory. So in my example, I won't be able to trademark the word Featherstone in 18 without worrying that this person is gonna oppose it because I don't wanna spend the two months um, of waiting, potentially have to pay them for opposing the application and all of that stuff. So I'm gonna design a unique logo with that word in it and you can either design a completely random picture or something that's applicable to Featherstone or trademark Featherstone written out in a different font potentially with a small graphic next to it and I'll show you what I mean in just a minute. So I have gone ahead and designed a unique logo containing the word that I'm trying to trademark Featherstone and just added a small graphic in there just to make it that extra bit unique submitting this in the application as opposed to just the word featherstone because that has already been done is going to help my application succeed okay so to summarize what we just did in that step we did some research luckily and found someone who already trademarked the word we wanted in the category we needed in order to make it distinguishable enough we went on to create a unique logo of that same word to increase our chances of success and now we're ready to talk about trademark types <music> There are three types of trademark, the first being a word such as Featherstone, the second being a slogan, and hopefully yours is better than my example, such as why waste materials when you can reuse them, and the third being an illustration, such as a graphic or a picture of a feather. The type of trademark you choose won't necessarily affect the cost of the application, but it may increase the chances of someone opposing your application. Since a question you're probably asking yourself is, if my trademark is a word, do I trademark the word alone or a logo illustration containing the word? I would say this comes down to research and research only. Before registering any trademark, spending a few minutes researching what's already out there won't only save you time and money, but it's easy. It's important to note that word marks give you stronger and wider rights to the product or business name than a logo mark. Let's take the word Featherstone as an example. If you trademark the word alone, then it's a lot harder for someone down the line to either copy your trademark or contrary to that, someone to accuse you of infringing their trademark. On the other hand, if you have a unique logo designed with the trademark Featherstone inside it and someone likes the idea of your business or your brand, registers a separate unique logo design with the word Featherstone in it, it will be much harder to oppose their application. Or that might sound daunting, however you can use this to your advantage. Whether you're someone who is creating a new application or defending an already registered application. If you're creating a new application with a word as common and widely used as bamboo, for instance, then all you will need to do to increase your chances of a successful application is to create an illustration which is unique enough in comparison to the existing registered brands. In layman's terms, if you're trademarking a common word which is already registered in the class you'd like to be registered in, then create a unique logo containing the word. If you're trademarking a unique word which hasn't been registered in the class you want to register in, then you may be better off trademarking the word as a standalone word. Trademarking a word won't stop you from using the word in a logo as long as the word you've trademarked is in the logo which means we can have a logo with a word in it whether or not we trademark the logo itself. We've got one more thing to decide before we can start the application and that is the application type. So there are two types of online applications to register a trademark. The first being the standard which takes around two months and the second is called the right start which is slightly more expensive at £200. It takes about two and a half months, but you have the added benefit of someone checking your application and letting you know if it meets the rules. I would never use this just because it takes longer and costs more. And I don't believe this is it's a complex enough task for, you know, to need someone to check it. Unless you're trademarking something unusual, which doesn't appear in a class, then I would just stick to the standard one. 
So now we've chosen our trademark class and we've chosen our trademark type. We've got one more decision to make before we can start the application. And that is application type. So there are two types of online applications to register a trademark. The first is a standard one and it takes around two months and costs £170. And the second one is called Right Start. The Right Start is slightly more expensive at £200. It takes an additional two weeks, so a total of two and a half months. But you have the added benefit of someone checking your application and letting you know if it meets the standards. Personally, I would never use this just because it does take longer and it costs more. And I don't believe the, you know, the application process is complex enough for, you know, to justify someone spending two weeks and an extra 30 quid for it. Unless you're trademarking something extremely unusual, which doesn't appear in a class and you need things like disclaimers, um, I would just stick with a standard one. Okay guys, so we're ready to register our trademark. What we want to do now is Google register trademark UK. We want to skip these ads and go directly to apply to register a trademark on the .gov website and follow this link apply now. So in our case we want to click the top option here, the trademark owner or authorised person within their business. We're not a solicitor or an attorney. So we continue. I've registered a trademark before, so I'm just going to go ahead and retrieve my details. So this is this whole process is going to be quite simple like this. It's going to ask you a whole bunch of questions like this, multiple choice questions, kind of yes or no answers. For instance, does a trademark you are applying to register have words, letters or numbers? Yes. Okay, so this step is the first of the two decisions we mentioned previously, trademark type. If the trademark is a word, even if the word is part of a logo or illustration, then we need to select yes here and then type the word in the box provided. So let's go Featherstone. Since we saw that somebody already had registered the word Featherstone in class 18, I'm gonna avoid clicking this option. I'm gonna go for this one here. It consists of letters or numbers in a particular style or color or with a picture, for example, one of these. So what we've done, we created a unique logo um, and we're trademarking the font with that small feather graphic. So this will apply. And you want to upload your logo. So I've got it just down here. And click upload. So remember, if the trademark is a standalone word without any association to design features or specific fonts, you would have selected the top choice before. However, if the word that you're trying to trademark hasn't been already trademarked within the class you're looking for, then you guys who fit in that category to click this top, top option here and then you will just be able to simply register a single trademark and then follow this through and you're now on to choosing your class. However, in our case, because someone had already trademarked the word Featherstone, so I had to then design a unique logo to increase my chances of approval, I'm going to click this option here. And I'll simply go ahead and upload my logo. So if you fit in the category where you, you were able to trademark a standalone word um, because no one had already done that, in your class, then that doesn't mean that you can't use a logo. Of course you can. You've just registered a standalone word, which means you have now increased your chances of protecting that word if anybody else is using it. However, in my example, I will only be able to really have a leg to stand on if someone copies this exact unique design. Anybody's now able to go and register Featherstone with a completely separate design in class 18. I might be able to oppose it, but my chances will be a little bit slimmer because it's, compl it's a completely different um, design they're registering. So single or series. I've always chosen single here as my trademarks have included designs without any variations. However, a series on the other hand contains more than one variation of design or formats. For example, if you trademark the word Featherstone in low case and capital letters, then you would need to select series. But do note that up to two variations is free, however, more than two costs £50 per additional mark. Since I've only got one variation of design, 
I'm only going to be registering a single trademark. If I wanted to register um, a slightly different design, maybe Featherstone without the um, small illustration of a feather, then I'd be going for series. But do remember that the more you register, the more chances there are that your trademark will be similar to someone else's, hence increases the chance of opposition. Okay, now we've moved on to the trademark class, which is a second and slightly simpler decision from the two decisions we mentioned at the start of the video. I would always recommend choosing the option select from a pre-approved list of terms. Here you can see all of the 45 classes listed and you can select from each one of them. So if we click on see everything in class. So we'll be able to see every single class listed that we briefly had a look at earlier on in the video all the way up to 45. So the one I'm choosing today is class 18, leather and imitations of leather. So once you've chosen the class, you'll need to select some subcategories. So I'll show you I'll show you that now. If you click continue. So remember we mentioned subcategories earlier on in the video. There's 766 subcategories in class 18. So you'll need to go through these um, and select. You can either select them one by one or since you're not having to pay additional money per subcategory um, or per approved pre-approved term, then I would just add every single one of them on there. It's not by any means going to increase your chance of opposition because once your opposition period starts, nobody can see your subcategories. They can only see and only really care about the class, the trademark class you're in. So I would go through all of these and select every single one of these. And I'll fast forward the video so you don't have to watch me do all of this. And now we're ready to add all of these terms to our application. Okay, so you can see everything we've added in our application there. So we can simply go to the bottom of this page and continue. So that was the bulk of the application done and certainly all of the hard work. Now all we need to do is just follow the steps and answer the questions using the multiple choice set options. So this is asking if we want to add a description or limitation and it tells you quite nice and clearly 99% of trademark applications do not need a description or limitation. I've never used that so I will just go no. We can also ignore the disclaimer. This may be useful if a solicitor or third party process your application for you and they want to say that they don't assume liability for their advice and so on. So we can just, since we're doing it ourselves, we can go no here. Okay, do you want to claim a priority registration date? So you can do this if you've applied to register this trademark outside of the UK. I'm assuming you guys haven't. I certainly haven't. So I'll go no there. Okay, so this is asking what type of trademark we're applying to register. And again, 99% of applications are just a standard trademark, so we're just going to continue with that. And now this part is the third decision we discussed at the start of the video. So it's either a standard examination or a right start examination. So I'll just quickly remind you of what the right start was. It has the added benefit of someone examining your application and telling you if it meets the rules, essentially. So it might take about two weeks more. Um, than the standard one and it also costs an extra 30 quid even though it's split over two payments it's non-refundable so if you pay the 100 pounds someone tells you that it doesn't meet the application rules then you'll still need to fork out well if you pull out you've lost 100 quid um, or you can change it and resubmit so it tells you here if you decide to continue with your application you must pay the rest of the fee within 14 days of receiving the examination report I really don't see the, the benefit in this. I would always just crack on with the standard examination. It's faster and it's 30 quid less. It's a no-brainer for me. So this has given us a summary of what we've registered and, and the class and subcategories we've applied for. And we can see here we're ready to pay. Continue. So these are a whole bunch of declarations you can read them, I've already read them and understand them, so I'm just gonna tick all of them and I will add my name there. I'll just copy it over here and that's it. So once we hit pay and submit application, we're ready to pay and that's basically it. You can follow this process and it's as simple as that. That's our application done. Now let's talk timescales 
and the opposition. So once your application has been submitted, it will take approximately three months in total to have your trademark registered if everything goes to plan. Once you've paid for the trademark, your application gets submitted to the IPO, the Intellectual Property Office, and within two weeks of receiving your application, they'll add it to an open register. And this is where the opposition period starts. Whilst, whilst it's in this register for two months, anybody who has a similar trademark will be notified, so that's similar by text or by design, they'll be notified and they will have the option of opposing your application if they feel it infringes theirs. If nobody opposes your application within that two month period, then your trademark will go live on the IPO records within two weeks from the end of the two month opposition period. And your trademark will be live and valid for 10 years. So that's three months in total. You've got two weeks of the IPO receiving it, you've got a two month opposition period, and then you've got, if it passes the opposition period, you've got two weeks um, for the trademark to go live. If you do get opposed, once they've opposed the application, you'll have two weeks to either withdraw your application, by which case you won't be refunded for your application fee, or you can reject their opposition, which in which case it may go to tribunal and you'll need to present evidence as to why you think the application won't have an effect on their business. So guys, if you found this video helpful, then please like and subscribe to my channel so I can keep videos like this coming. Most importantly, if you have any questions, then feel free to drop them in the comment section below and I'll try my best to answer them as soon as possible. All the best, guys. Mm -hmm.